Okay. So, let's try doing a... Let's try turning on the motor first. So, we'll make the motor turn on at a speed of 8. Then we're going to... Uh, Then while that's running, we'll make it... Then while that's running, we'll wait for that input. Um, if it doesn't have an input, we'll just loop it back. All right, and then we're going to bring in our photo transistor. So let's put that branch in there. And while the photo transistor is not uh, reading the value that we want, we want it to be dark. Um, while it's while it's reading light, we want it to loop. Um, let's try the light behind it. So that one should be light four. So we'll make it blink for, let's do, or oh, something finicky about these is that you have to make sure that they come from the top. Oh, what? Okay. So we'll set the motor output to four. So this is our light. So click lamp, I'll make it turn on. We'll set a brightness of eight and then we'll wait one second and then we'll turn it back off. And then we'll wait one second. Let's try actually Let's do 0.5 seconds. And then we'll do the same thing. So we'll copy these. And we'll make this turn off. Copy this. Connect it to the bottom. And so what this should do is this should make it so that every, while this uh, photoresistor is reading light, it's going to make the light behind it turn off and on again until eventually it does read that there's darkness. So we're going to make that loop back to the beginning of the branch. So it keeps looping until it finally does receive that darkness and then it moves on to the next part of the program. So let's try that. Let's try testing it right here. So start. Okay, something really annoying about these is that they have to, all the elements have to be connected.
Hmm. Okay, interestingly, the motor seems to be fluctuating. Maybe it's a distribution distribution of power. But if we take a look at the light, you can see that it turns off and on again. Maybe if you block the photoresistor, and what should happen is that if you block the photoresistor, it should stop. All right. So let's move on to using the push run switch. So let's delete the segment. And let's tr let's insert our photo. And actually, let's copy this whole segment right here. Copy. We're going to use that later. Take our, uh, we're going to take our, then we're going to take, all right, so now we're going to connect that branch to the digital branch, connect the zero of that branch to this loop this program segment right here, connect the end of this segment back around to that bridge. So now we're going to make it so that instead of toggling light four, we're going to toggle light three. So make it three, light three. And then let's see if that works. And as you can see, now this light is turning on. So that means that the program uh, went through the branch successfully. And if we press this button, now the program terminates because, oh, actually, this is a good demonstration. But anyway, now that we press that button, you can see that the program terminated. Uh, and if we actually, All right, and so now what I want to do is let's do let's put a wait for input. Let's um let's actually make a command so that the motor stops for a second. And then let's wait for an output. And then let's make and then let's make a way for an input. Okay. Um actually and just to indicate this. Actually we already know that it reaches the point if the motor stops, so we don't have to indicate anything. And when we receive that input from the phototransistor or the photoresistor. Let's turn that light on. And then if we receive an input, actually, let's keep it like that. And then if that works, that then we go on to a pulse counter, and then let's wait for ten pushes of the switch. And then, if that works, then we'll light up lamp number two, which is on the left side of the motor, uh, and also turn off lamp number three. Okay. And then let's do a loop where 
the motor switches from oh, from f eight speed to one speed. And let's put a delay of one second between those. And then we're going to have that loop for three times. And then you want to make that segment come back to the plus one pin. Okay. And let's make it so that this spins at a speed of one for one second. And then after that, we're going to make the program end. And then um, ideally you'd put commentary to explain each segment of the program, uh, but I'm not going to do that. So let's start. All right, first thing we need to do is stop the photoresistor. Then we need to press the push button. Okay. And now you can see that the motor stopped. It's waiting for an input from the push button. Now the light behind it turned on. And so now we're going to press this button 10 times. Interesting that pulse counter did not wait for 10 times. <laughs> I might not be used to using a pulse counter. Uh, wait, well, hold on. Let me actually set these to three seconds. Uh, and also with this pulse counter. Rising. Okay. Okay, now we're going to press the button once. And I should count 9 or 10 uh, pushes. I'm not sure if it counts that previous push as a pulse, but... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. Now this light turned on. Every three seconds, it's going to toggle the motor. Second loop, third loop, it's going to end now. And voila! And that's how you use the elements to write a basic program in RoboPro. Nice job.